Uh, now, uh, I have a question uh, to ask this morning, and we can try to answer to that uh, at a very personal level. Uh, and it comes from the Bible. What is your life? This is James. James's question, Apostle James asking us, what, what is your life? And, and that's a good question, by the way. Sometimes pause and think about what this thing called life is all about. And I think the most challenging thing to us is to, to learn to see things from God's perspective. Viewing things as God viewed things. And trying to make sense of all this. And I think there are good benefits if we learn. The more we learn to see things from God's perspective, the more we learn to know and understand what life is all about. And the more we learn to appreciate, but also to understand for all the circumstances that we, we all of a sudden may be in. Somebody, you, some of you this morning, and you try to, uh, you try to ask yourself, why in the world I am in this situation? What is life? What is life for me? And then you are trying to see things from God's perspective, which is sometimes very challenging. We keep on asking God, why, 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 why this? And then we start complaining easily that Nobody else is in this situation, God. Why me? So the question is, how do you see your life today? Considering everything that is going on to you, around you, and where you are involved, how do you see your life today? Are you appreciative, or are you kind of complaining, or, or, or where you are this morning? How do you define life determines who you are, and even more, it determines your destiny. The way you deal with things and deal with other people, deal with your calling and plan that God gave, God gave to you, and the big thing called purpose. Because there's purpose for you and there's purpose for me from God. <clears throat> your perspective of life will influence how you invest your time, little things, spend your money, use your talents and, and how you value your relationships and how you serve in the church and how you spend, how you invest to the ministry. It all depends how do you see your life today. Very, very important question for us to, to answer. One of the best ways to understand other people is to ask simply them, how do you see your life? Have you tried that sometimes? Go and try that when you go to Sunday school class this morning, if you have time. Ask each other, ask one another, how do you see your life? Where you are at this morning in your life and with your life. And you will discover that there are as many different answers to that question as there are people. Trust me, there will. I have been told, I have asked this question, I asked this question once in a while, and I have been told all kinds, I have been given all kinds of answers. For example, the following. People say to me, after I've asked a question, how do you see your life, I think, they say, Tim, I think life is just the one big circus. That's what it is. It don't make much sense to me at all. Somebody may say, well, it's a minefield. <laughs> you need to watch where you stop, a uh, step. It's a roller coaster. It's like a puzzle. When somebody who is a little bit more artistic soul may say, it's, it's Tim, it's like a symphony. It's beautiful, but it's hard to understand what it's all about. It's symphony. Some may say it's a journey. It's just a journey. And we need to make best out of it. Somebody who is, who is maybe again more like an emotional personality and, and so forth say it's a, it's a big dance. 
and so forth, so forth, so forth. All kinds of, all kinds of answers. You just have to play the hand you are deal, talking about the cards of your life that all has been given to you. If I ask how you picture life, what image, what, what image would, would come to your mind, that's very important. How you picture your life. That image is your life metaphor, the big story of your life. Don't underestimate that. It is the view of life that you hold consciously or unconsciously in your mind. It is your description of how life works for you and what are you expecting from it. What is it you believe? How is it you see yourself and how is it you view yourself? What is it you believe in talking about yourself? People often express their life metaphors through different little things. For example, how they, how they are dressing their clothes. Jewelry, big things for ladies. Or men, cars. Pumper stickers or tattoos. All kinds of little things that they, they are communicated. This is how I see my life. This is who I am. Talking about vehicles, talking about cars. I had a church member at one time in my church that, now, first of all, everybody knew that he was pretty well off. He was well off. He was rich. And, and I don't think he knew what, he, what all he owned. Hundreds of acres, thousands of acres land, for example. And then he was in all kinds of business, in, in the insurance business and real estate business and building business and you just name it. But every time when he came to church Sunday morning, guess what? He was driving his 20 years old Chevrolet pickup truck. And I don't know what is it he wanted to communicate to the rest of us. And then when he drove to the meetings to the big city, he drove that, uh, that big SUV, uh, uh, truck that was probably 70, $80,000 worth. Now we can communicate to our friends, what we want, but it just tells something who we are. Put it in simply, your unspoken life metaphor influences your life more than you realize. It determines your expectations, your values, your relationships, your goals, and your priorities. If you think life is a big party, your primary value in life will be having fun. But that's very shallow way to see this life. So what is your view of life? How do you see your life today? When you think about God, you think about your work, you think about your family, you think about your friends, you think about your service. You may have a completely wrong picture of your life and who you are. To fulfill the purpose God made you, for you, you got to know, you got to challenge yourself and to learn what is the biblical metaphor, what is the biblical picture, what is God's purpose for you to live this short moment on the earth and then go back to, to God. The Bible says in Romans 12.12, 12, excuse me, 12.2, 2, do not, do not conform yourselves to the standards of this world. Don't do that. But let God transform you inwardly by a complete change of your mind. Then you will be able to know the will of God. So there are three things here that challenges us a lot. Do not conform yourself to the standards of this world. That's the easiest thing, to go along and just let it go. Don't, don't do that. That's not good for you. But let God transform, which is, let God change you inwardly, inside, by a complete change of your mind. First heart, then your mind, your attitude, all that you are representing you. Let that happen and take place. 
And then you will be able to know the will of God. You are reading him much better and it's much easier for you to figure out what God wants me to do in this world. The Bible offers actually at least three, should I call them metaphors, plans or pictures that teach us how to learn to see things from God's perspective or how God view our life. And there are three things. First of all, you can't help it, but from God's perspective, talking about us, life is a big test. Big test. Testing. Lots of testings. Then life can be a trust, and it is a trust from God. And then it is a short, temporary assignment. It may last 85 years like in Daddy, for Daddy. But looking from eternal perspective, it's a very short period of time. So what is your temporary assignment from God? And these ideas can be the foundation of your life. Let, let's, let's take a look for this first one. Let's say it aloud. Let's say it aloud. Life on earth can be very testing. It can be very difficult. And, and, and the more you learn to understand, the more you understand yourself and and your life itself. Let me rephrase it. Life is not easy. If you are looking for an easy life, you don't know what life is all about. Nobody from this spot right here shouldn't promise his listeners that life is easy. And then if it's not easy, something is wrong with you. You hear that a lot. But that's not the word of God. Life can be very testing and difficult for some of us and for some of you seemingly even more testing than to somebody else. And this life metaphor, metaphor is seen in stories throughout the Bible. It's all over in the Bible. People having hard time, going through hard times, testings. And God continually tests people's character, for example. Faith and obedience and love and integrity and loyalty. All these fields will be tested. Words like trials and temptations and refining and testing occur in the Bible more than 200 times. It's all over in the Old and New Testament. Life is testing. Let me take a few examples. For example, God tested Abraham. Abraham, right in the beginning of the Bible, by asking him to offer his son Isaac. Have some of you been tested this way? I don't think so. That was a test. Or God tested Jacob when he had to work extra years to earn Rachel as his wife. How many of you have been working 20 years for your uh, coming uh, in-laws to become, to get the lady, to marry the lady you married? I don't think so. Some of us would give up, you know, after a couple of weeks and say, okay, I'm looking at other resources. Adam and Eve failed their test in the Garden of Eden. Pretty badly. That's why we are having church this morning. <laughs> if they didn't fail, we can stay home and be happy. <laughs> Every single Sunday. Gosh, what a mess they created. <laughs> and David failed his test from God several occasions. By the way, David is one of that, those people in the Bible. I, 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 it always impresses me when I look at his story, which is wonderful and beautiful story of God's power and grace. But then when you go to New Testament, how, how great he was in the eyes of God and, and, and in the eyes of Israelites today. And that guy, he just screwed it up all the time. But Bible also gives us many examples of people who passed the great test. Just as Joseph and Ruth and Esther and Daniel. And by doing that, God did something great in their personality. Revealed himself to them and developed 
their personalities and character and make them better. All through testing. All through testing. And because of testing. So we don't know all the tests God will give you. But we can predict some of them based on the Bible. You will be tested by major changes. Listen. By major changes in your life. Be ready. Delayed promises. You've been expecting from God to answer to you and just it just don't happen. Impossible problems. Unanswered prayers. Unanswered prayers. Undeserved criticism. Be ready. And even senseless problems and tragedies. And sometimes when you are wishing it, listening to people and, and, and trying to see things from somebody else's perspective and even, even trying to see from God's per perspective and nothing really makes sense because it is just too much for you to understand. And then you need to trust that God, this is all part of your big picture and I just need to make, try to make some sense out of it. In my own life, let me just be open, I have been I have been noticed that God tests my faith through problems. Well, there's nothing special, but obviously he's doing the same with you, am I right? He tests my hope by how I handle things. And he tests my love all the time through people. Constantly. Now... In my family, of course, my in-laws being so sick and investing thousands of traveling and taking off from work, talking about my wife without pay, and just trying to build, build a why in the world this all, all of a sudden, this, this all start happening. A very important test is how you act when you can't feel God's presence in your life. You just can't feel that he's with you. And you question whether he's there at all. Don't be afraid of those thoughts because it will happen, maybe, sooner than you believe. Then the last thing is life on earth can be seen as a trust. And this is how God sees your life. This is how God view your life. Our time on earth and our energy and our intelligence and opportunities and relationships and resources are all gifts from God. He has entrusted you something to our care and to our management. Something that doesn't belong to us, but it is a loan from Him. When you think about your life, what is it you brought along when you came to this world? Nothing really at all. We are stewards of whatever God gives to us. This concept of stewards, it begins with the a recognition that God is the owner of everything and everyone on earth. Listen to what Bible says in Psalm 24, 1. The world and all that is in it belong to the Lord. The earth and all who live on it are His. And period. This time on the earth is just a short period of time and it's long. It is trust from God. We never really own anything during our brief stay on earth. Very hard lesson to learn. God just loans the earth to us while we were here. And it is God's property before you arrived. And it will be his after you die. And if you happen to say that I own something, somebody else will take over it and do whatever he wants to do about it. You just get to enjoy it for a little while. And this is so simple, simple concept, but some people don't understand it. They are handling things as if the whole world belongs to them. And there is nothing for anybody else. When God created Adam and Eve, he entrusted that care of his creation to them. And appointed them to trustees of his property. The Bible says in Genesis 1.28, 
God blessed them and said, have many children. This is what I try to preach to young couples. Have many children. So that your descendants will live all over the earth and bring it under their control. I am putting you in charge. I am putting you in charge for a little while. And the first job God gave humans was to manage and to take care of God's stuff on earth, not our stuff. Trying to see this from God's perspective, all that you may have today, good health, wonderful family, plans and purpose, is not really yours, but it's a gift from God for you to handle it a little while before you will leave and go back where you came from. And when you see these things from God's perspective, you learn to answer the question, how do I feel about my life today? What are my priorities? What is it God wants me to do for his kingdom, for my family, for loved ones? My life may be just one big service to others, and that is it. I have learned to put things in right order to be happy. This is why we have so much unhappiness in this world and hopelessness because people don't get this simple concept. They can't see things from God's perspective. They are selfish and narrow-minded. They are lonely. They are hopeless. There's no purpose. There's no plan. There's no smile. There's no joy because all they know is myself. This morning, the Word of God wants to open it up for us. And the question, straightforward question, comes from God. What is your life? What is your life? Think about it. What is your life? And what God wants it to be for you. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, help us to see what is my life all about, what is our life all about. Help us not to conform, conform ourselves to the standards of this world. But Lord, help us to transform inwardly by a complete change of our heart and our mind. So doing, we will be able to know the will of God, which is always the best and good for us. Lord, I pray for my fellow church mem members this morning. I pray for them and those who have been tested and who may be in the middle of testings and tests of this life. And they are trying to learn and they are trying to figure out what in the world this is all about. Holy Spirit, help them to see what their life is from God's perspective. Help them to see that I will be okay. God is, God is just using His ways and His grace, through His grace to polish my character and to, to clean my, my, my personality and to make me better servant and disciple for better use in his service. Lord, I pray for those who, who may never understood that their life is a big trust from God. The things that God trusted under their care are not really theirs, but Lord, they are yours. Help them to become good stewards on something that you trust under their care. Lord, help us to take this message home. Help us to, help us to con continually to learn to see things from your perspective. From the angle you see us, how precious we are, 
uh, how much you love us and how much you invest it on us. And help us to make our love relationship with you true. Even this morning as we pray, as we celebrate, Lord, your grace and mercy. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.